everyone, my name is Michelle Rank, and I am so glad that you're here to join me for our So Fun Club for the month of April. And this month, we have a very special treat. Um, Anna from Anna's Awesome Applique will be joining me shortly. Um, we've had her many times before for our So Fun Club, and she is always a customer favorite. So before we get going, I want to talk to you real quick about Show and Tell that we'll have at the end of the video here. Now, show and tell, um, you're going to be able to share online a picture of a project that you're working on. And with that, you can like, comment, and share. And you'll be in the running to win one of these awesome Hope Yoder DVD packs. I've got two different ones here. And it's valued at about $50. So it's a really good gift to get. So don't forget to like, comment, and share on this video what you've been working on um, for your show and tell, we would love to see them. And also, keep in mind, you can always go to moores-sew.com for any and all of your sewing needs. All the staff here at Moore Sewing Centers are here to help you in every niche of our sewing community. So we are here to help you. And once again, moores-sew.com. So it's my pleasure once again to bring in Anna from Anna's Awesome Applique. And once again, this is the third time that we've had her for our So Fun Club. She's always a customer favorite. So welcome, Anna. Thank you so much, Michelle. I really appreciate it. And I want to introduce my daughter, Annika Michelle. And she's been she joined me in the last five years for being very helpful with the setting up booths and working on designs. And so I'm very excited that she's part of my party now. <laughs> well, very nice. Well, and I got the pleasure of meeting them at Road to California face to face. And yeah, it's good to see you both again. Thank you. So Great seeing you. I, yeah, absolutely. So um, as we're aware, you've been to our store um, once before, and we've had you for So Fun Club once before. And we are bringing in some of um, the favorites from before, but we also have a lot of great new patterns from Anna. So before we dive into all the fun stuff with patterns and her designs, I would like Anna just to share briefly how she got started in this wonderful business. Well, that's an interesting story, actually, because I actually do have over 30 years of hand piecing, hand quilting, and hand applique. And that was just to keep you know, my, my hobbies. As a corporate America worker, I was a project manager in a uh, the aircraft company and in tech, uh, information technology. So I have a lot of logical things behind me and I also have artistic. So I love creating things. And when I started, my sister actually taught me how to digitize. And when I started looking at it and I'm thinking, oh, what can I do with this? Because when I did hand applique, I love hand applique, but it's slow. And after I did one, I didn't want to do the same thing over and over again. So I learned how to digitize. And I thought, well, now that I know how to do this, what am I going to do with my new skill? And I, you know, by then it was five years before I had planned to retire. And I knew I needed to do something to keep me busy. So I started working with different hand applique artists. And I did a royalty agreement with them to go ahead and take their black and white artwork. And I would digitize it to create embroidery files for the embroidery machine so it's like wow. right, yay so win-win you know they get more market and i have a set of designs and what the beauty of that is my designs are a wide range of different things mm -hmm. because i work with different hand applique artists and then uh, so it's like yay and then somewhere along the line and you'll see some of those during the day uh, during our video here I made some of my own. So I got a little bit more braver and I thought, okay, I could do geometric things. So you'll see some of those as well. But I'm very, very excited. Uh, I've been, I started my business in 2010. I retired in 2015 and been going strong ever since. Well, very good. Well, we're so glad that you're here with us. And um, let's bring on the wonderful designs that Anna has for us today. Okay, great. I'll go ahead and get started. Um, the first one I want to mention is I have a series of 12 of these. We're only going to review five, but if you take a look at the, uh, if you want to order more, just go ahead and order at your local Mars store and then they'll get this for you. But this is Hummingbird with Amaryllis. And this design 
is based on 12 different designs for the month, the uh, for each month. There's nothing to say that you have to buy all of them or, you know, there's no rules around them. But I did want to note that I do have everything on thumb drives. And if you can see there, there's a little cute little charm so you know what that is. Because when I translated from uh, CDs to thumb drives back in about 2015, 2016, it's like, well, we have to have a way to organize it. So we, I did that. And then, so with that in mind, here's the wall hanging design. Oh, it's beautiful. And it's going to be done on multiple hoopings. And I include crosshairs with that. So that's the February one. And what's important as well for each of the designs, there are three additional bonus blocks that you can create other uh, works with. So I really enjoy that part as well. Now we're going to move to the next one that we have from the block of the month. And this is a all time favorite from all the customers I've ever had. In fact, I've had to order these again for after the first set oh, sold out. But this is Sunny Sunflower and it's August. And again, it has the three different bonus blocks. And it's got the cute little thumb drive with the, the charm. And what's beautiful about this, this was a, one of the very first ones I did with Darcy. And Darcy Ashton is the artist for this. And I started stitching this out. And you can see the beauty of that sunflower. And I picked out all those different colors. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, these are just going to be fantastic. And it turned out so beautiful. I really enjoyed how that turned out. And then looking at the bonus blocks, look at this. That middle bonus block and it gives you oh, that wow. and, um, Andy Warhol type look and feel. So this is a really beautiful way to work those bonus blocks and make it like a little tabletop or whatever you want to do. And it changes. The flowers almost look like they're, you know, a daisy that's been colored in and you don't see the sunflower. That is really it, special. I love that, Anna. Yeah, no, it does take a bit of time to stitch these out because there's a lot of thread changes and stuff, but it's well worth it, isn't it? I mean, how can you oh, yes. not want to do that? <laughs> the next one I'm going to cover is going to be the one for September, which is the wild cone flower. And this one, again, has the three different bonus blocks and sometimes they're just applique and sometimes they are um, with quilting in it. So I'm going to bring this one up here. This is the wall hanging for September. And that nice. pretty. Home flowers are some of my favorite flowers. So this is a good way to um, learn how to do multiple hoopings. And then the bonus blocks, because they're all quilted, I went ahead and make this little wall, you know, wall oh. hanging thing. Isn't that cute? Yeah, and then I just reverse the, the, the bird so you have opposite directions of that. And you can see the quilted blocks in there as well. So Very nice. Had a lot of fun with that. And all her designs um, from her hand applique, they always come up really beautiful from the, from the embroidery machine as well. Okay, the next one I'm going to do is going to be the October pumpkin patch or pumpkin stats. It's got a beautiful little thumb drive charm of a pumpkin. It's got these different bonus blocks. But what I did with those bonus blocks, look at how cute oh, those table yeah. runner. So when we start talking about the quilted blocks, you'll know more about the ones that, that don't have the applique on them. But the, the pumpkins are just makes a perfect little table runner. And you know, I just put them in the direction that I wanted. So I thought it was very cute that way. Yeah, and those can tie yeah. over from October to November because exactly. No, yeah, so that's a two monther. <laughs> there you go. But let me show you the wall hanging on that. Oh, so cute! I just love the use where you bring in the wildlife with the blocks. It's just striking, and um, I'm very much so drawn to them. Very nice. And it's very good to have an artist like Darcy Ashton who drew these up, and she is very in tune to how wildlife works in, in nature, and her, her applique designs reflect that very much. Okay, last but not least on the block of the months that we're going to show during this video is the one for November, 
autumn nut, nut hatch. And again, it has these three different bonus blocks on there. I don't have a sample of the bonus blocks, but I do have the wall hanging. Oh, and a lot you. of people always, you, thank you. A lot of people keep telling me, well, isn't that bird upside down? And I re reached out to Darcy because she's the artist and she knows her animals really well. She says, that's the normal state of how they work. They like to be upside down. I said, okay. And then what's really pretty too is all the flowers, or flowers the leaves are multiple colors. So I've yes. definitely made those into different fall colors and just really nice uh, how it looks and how it turns out. Yes, the um, when you focus on the leaves, you can see all the dimension and the various colors and fabric used that really make them look lifelike. Yes, and, and one thing I forgot to mention, but I'll mention here, you can see the detail, especially on the bird, that there are trapunto stitches on top of the applique to give you that depth of dimension and gives you that feel of the feathers and whatnot. So there's a lot of fun with that as well. Alrighty, well, those are the block of the munch and we're gonna now move on to Claire's cats. Claire's cats are adorable. Now this is, Darcy is very famous for her animal books. And the very first design I did with her was the cats. And there are um, several different cats with different um, outline stitches, which we'll cover. They are, they can fit either a six inch hoop or an eight inch hoop. And it does have come with a thumb drive. The very first one that I stitched out is Oh, very nice. Cat. And if you look, I'm going to bring it a little closer. Here we have satin stitches around the cat. Here we have blanket stitch. And here we have a back stitch. So you have all three options on the design. And then when I was working with Darcy, you're going to love this. <laughs> she says, now, Anna, and of course, she's very particular about her hand up. Okay. I want you to make the eyes look realistic. So that each of the eyes have a highlight in them. And then she says, if oh, you're going to do nice. the, if you're going to do the blanket stitch, I want it to look like it's hand a hand blanket stitch. So I needed to make sure that they bend and worked in different ways. So there's a lot to these when you are working with the artist and she has a particular vision in mind. The other thing I want to mention, show you is look how different those same caps look in black and white with a red ribbon. Isn't that beautiful? Got to figure out how oh, to Oh, it's keep absolutely it gorgeous. Yeah. And that's the beauty about doing applique in the hoop. You get your creativity comes from whatever color you want to do, what color fabric or range of fabrics that you want. So it's a lot of fun there. Okay, continuing on with the cats, because there's a lot of cats. There's actually 13 different cats, and seven of them have different outline stitches. From her book, this particular design, and the cat is actually intended to be upside down like this. She's laying down and has got one of her little toys on front of her. But they've got all these cute little toys in there. And these are oh, the, wow. shows the same cat with different stitching. And it's, there's a cute little kitten here. There's just all kinds of wonderful things. And you see how this one kitten has this little heart on there? Isn't that adorable? Yes. Yes. So there are so... You know, one of the things that I tend to do is, okay, what else can I do with these designs? And yeah, I just keep going and going and going. Let me show you a couple more here. Yeah, so, so potential opportunities to create with the one design package of Claire's cats. Exactly. And that's and I want and that's why I make so many different samples to give people inspiration or ideas of what, you know, bright colors versus more subtle colors. The, these next six cats from that same pattern are what I call the patch cats. And they only have the one outline, which is the um, blanket stitch. But I wanna show you first a more traditional look at these. And yes, the mice are part of it too. Isn't that so fun? <laughs> Very sweet. Aren't those adorable? Now, take a look at the difference between that and bright color. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, it's, it's traditional coming. versus modern. Absolutely. Yes. So and you there's can, no right you know, or wrong. No, and that's the beauty of these, 
It's all the designs. You make it to what you want to do with whatever fabric. And it's going to be bright or it's going to be more traditional. And I just love how the versatility of applicating the hoop really allows the creativity of fabric selections and making it your own. Absolutely. Yep. Love that. Okay. Now we're going to go to the next one, which is Darling Little Dogs, again by Darcy Ashton. There are 15 different dogs in this pattern. And I've got, again, I've got it on a thumb drive. There are six of the 15 dogs are also in two color fabric. So here are the ones that have two color fabrics. And again, it's always hard. People that have dogs are very particular to, do you have this kind? And I, unfortunately, I don't know every last dog there is out there, mm -hmm. but you can see yeah, that little Jack Russell, all you have to do is change some of the fabrics to really make it your own. And even the body exactly. interior. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's really, yeah. really and great. Eagle, and yep, it, absolutely. Now, here's all 15, which is one fabric. So on this design, you, you have the option of making two different color fabrics or you could do it on one. And what's really great about this is look how quick and easy that oh. would be. Look at that Scotty. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And they come both in six inch and eight inch. So if you have a six inch hoop or an eight inch hoop, you can do these. And if you have both, you can make double the fun. <laughs> well, I like that you have the smaller hoops because there are people that are just starting out with um, embroidery and they generally, you know, aren't going to have the top of the line largest hoop. So they can start off, but yet as they grow, they have the additional size to make a bigger dog as well. So that's wonderful. Big. Exactly. And, that, and I, where the designs permit them to get, be in the smaller hoop, i.e. the six inch hoop, I do that. But not all designs are catered to that. So, but where they are, I definitely do that. Okay, now we're going to get started on the next one, which is Sunflower Baby Pattern. Yet another design from Darcy Ashton. And what's really cute about this... This does come in six inch and eight inch. Whoops, upside down. Yay. <laughs> Look how cute those faces are. Oh, so sweet. And those are stitched out on the embroidery machine. And then if you notice on the top there, we have um, the two color fan or flower mm -hmm. around the face. And then we have multicolor. So you have those two options. And then you have the pointy or the curved as far as the blade end. So you have four different options. You've got two that are curved, uh, two that are pointy. And this is a six Very inch nice. version. And then this is the eight inch version. And you can see how much bigger that is, but you can see how pretty that becomes. Oh, wow. And so, I mean, once again, changing your fabrics out. Just gives you a whole different look. Yeah, it looks like a retro 30s now. Yeah, exactly. And then also I wanted to mention that these half squares and corner squares are part of the design as well with the options of two color or multicolor and the curved or the pointed blade. So you can start seeing how big, how many options you have with this. And then, of course, Anna doesn't stop there. I'm thinking, okay, while, while the... They're, they're so cute, the little faces and everything. Not everybody is going to want to have a face uh, around the flower. So why don't I make the blocks available without faces? And that way you can create like a table runner. Oh, yeah. And you, all those different combinations, the half, corner, and full, curved or not curved, uh, curved or pointy, and two color or multicolor, all those are in there with either six inch and or eight inch. So it's pretty amazing what you can do uh, you oh, know, from yeah. the same design, how many different ways you can use, utilize that. Just brings in that whole traditional Dresden plate look. Yep, very nice. Yep, so I had lots of fun doing that. The next design I'm gonna talk about is the rose wreath. This design was done, my friend Kathleen, back, oh, probably 2012, 2013. She, she maybe even before that, because I started my business at 2010. So probably 20, by 2012, she drew this um, 
rose wreath because she loves roses and her favorite color is yellow. She loves yellow uh, roses. So I decided to take her design and make a little wall hanging. Oh, that is gorgeous. And what's really cool about this is that each, the, the, the fabric I use is batik, so it had more um, mauled color, so it had lights and darks in it. And then I just, on the flower, the flower is just one piece of fabric, so it's really easy to do. It's not like cutting out all these different petals. And then I use a satin stitch to make the detail of the, the uh, rose. So it's just one piece of fabric, you trim around the outside, you do the satin stitch and it's going to do all the petals of the rose. So I just want to make do sure. All the shading and the detail work. Yeah. Very yeah, nice. exactly. So that was a very fun one to do. And then there are roses in each corner. So you can easily put these on whatever you might want to do. So that was a lot of fun to do with her. So now we're going to move to the Southwest theme things. And this is from Michelle Watts. And the first one I'm going to talk about is her Santa Cruz sampler, which is, has 20 different uh, crosses on there. So this is a Santa Cruz sampler. Let's raise it up. And then mm -hmm. let's do. And also the blue part oh, here. Yes. Uh-huh. The, the blue sashing and the corner blocks are also done on the inverting machine. So you have, and this requires an eight inch wide hoop. But you can do all of this in a hoop, each block. And it's just pretty fantastic how they turn out. And she you know, selected these. They've got a Southwest theme, uh, various ways of doing crosses. It's absolutely gorgeous. And so many different usages. I mean, you could use one or two blocks, or you can use all of them that are provided and definitely have multiple you know, chances of making multiple quilts based on whichever crosses you pick. And I love the colors. It's very, um, you know, retro and striking and it's just vivid. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. And, and again, this is by Michelle Watts and her, she's well known for um, Southwestern type designs. And that brings us to the design behind me. That's what we've been um, kind of showcasing. This is Fiesta Talavera. It comes in a big packaging like this. The finished block is 20 by 20, so this is 20 by 20, and that of course means multiple hoopings, but I do everything, I line the, uh, each section with crosshairs, and I've gotten great feedback on my method of doing that, and mm -hmm. then just to show what completely different, because I like to, like, okay, I wonder what it would look like if, and here's what it looks like when it's done in black. <gasps> oh, wow. Wow. So yeah, that totally, reminds me of Spanish artwork or a, a Spanish tile. Yeah, and that, I think uh, she based her, these are, if I remember correctly, on Mexican tiles. So, yeah, based on Mexican nice. hand-painted tiles. So, so, yeah, that's what her inspiration was. And having that agreement with her, I could take these and digitize them and um, have them ready for inverting machines, and they're beautiful. And how many blocks are in that set? There are a total of nine different blocks and the beautiful border. As you may notice, we've changed the background. So let me show you first the design that I'm going to talk about first, and then we'll go move on to the owls. Again, Darcy Ashton, back in probably 2016, 2015, that range, she came out with a new book called Owls with um, Owls, Outstanding Owls. And my pattern is Owls with Attitude. But the, the, what's also included in that book is an owl needle keeper. And this is a cute little pattern cover with a thumb drive. And what the owl needle keeper is, it's got a cute little front, <laughs> a cute little back, and then you can make as many pages to keep track of your pins and needles. Because if you put a needle into a... Um, pin cushion is just going to disappear. So right. these are always are people just love these little owl needle keepers and they're really easy. This is the only design I have 
that fit a five by seven hoop. So if you're one of those people that are still starting out and you're not quite sure what to do, this is a great design for you. The other thing that's really neat is you can see that these are put together with a little hole in there and keep them organized. But if you are tired of having, or made, you've made enough owl needle keepers and you want to move on, you can make that front owl without the little circle and it becomes a mug rug. You can just put anything that you want on top of there. Very cute. And, and then, because Anna never quits and always wants to do more, think I've <laughs> included in that same pattern this cute little, um, it's the same owl top, but it doesn't have the satin stitch on the bottom. So you can actually make as many blocks as you want, put them together, do whatever you want with them. Oh, so what a it's great a very, idea. yeah, yeah. There, there's so many things you can do with these, and I always, whenever I do a show, I have these um, right on the table near me, and people always stop and stare at those. They just love them. So um, just wanted to mention the owls with that, or the the uh, oh, owl needle keeper. keeper. Yep. <laughs> you know how it, you know when you're just can't even think anymore. Yeah. All right, now. Owls with attitude. There are 20 different owls that are back behind me. Each of them have their own look and feel and their whole attitude. And I wanted, there's just so much to these that I want to show. Not only do we have the 20 different owls that are fit an eight inch wide hoop, and then this is long arm quilted, we also have those same 20 owls as colorful owls. So I wanted to show you over here that these are just some of those 20 owls that are colorful. What's beautiful about that is that each one of these colorful owls has its own quilting, but has a unique quilting design behind it. And we'll talk about more quilting designs here in a minute. But those are the colorful owls with the quilting design. The natural color owls, have one quilting design, which is this flowery design, if you can see it. Let me get the yeah, light on it. Very nice. yep. So, and the beauty about these, again, Darcy's very active in my communication when I create these uh, digitized designs and I send her pictures or I'll send her samples because she lives up in, in Oklahoma City. We decided, I don't know if you can tell, look how in depth those eyes are. They're intended to be, you know, they, that like they're staring at you. And, and we have lots exactly. of uh, detail on that. And then well, here's another. Share, I'll share, Anna. I've made um, this quilt with um, all of your wonderful owls. And those owl eyes, um, they follow you around. They really have the <laughs> detail. And it's just, they're wonderful. I absolutely fell in love with them and had to bring them back for the rest of our customers. Oh, good, good. I'm so glad to hear that. What's really fun, too, is that the colorful owls, like I mentioned, has oh. that quilting behind it. It also has a freestanding three-inch block. So you either could do it as a freestanding block or you can do it as a corner store block. So uh, th th just wanted to share some of those options as well and see how this one looks like, how completely different they oh, look. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Anna doesn't stop. She always wants to do something more. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the thing is, if to do so, a couple of things on these: the, these when you do the quilted blocks, the one the ones with the owls on back on, on quilting, your hoop size has to be nine and a half by eleven and a half to the stitch area. So not everybody has that. And here in a minute, I'm going to talk about quilted blocks and how you could use those quilted blocks as a backing fabric and still do it with an eight inch by eight inch. But I just have one more thing to share because Anna never stops. <laughs> also included in the Owls with Attitude book is a tote bag. So all the things you see here, you can take any owl that you want and you just gonna have information about the size and the bottom and how to put it together but this is a tote bag instructions as part of Owls with Attitude. So all kinds of lovely little things. Yes, it's a great package. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the uh, quilted blocks.
Now I had showed you with the owls with attitude, all the different, um, the, the colorful owls have a different quilting design. And those quilting designs are based on, and this is Quilted Block Swan, they're based on designs from Quilted Block Swan. Quilted Block Swan has 42 different designs and they all match, 20 of them match with the colorful owls. You have 20 that match the colorful owls and you have an additional um, 22 to do whatever you want to with them. But the reason why I mention that is because when you do the wall hanging, you want to also be able to do the larger quilt block to be able to, to do the um, finish up the sides, the borders of the wall hanging. But there are, four, are 42 different designs. The quilt blocks ones are based on more traditional blocks and quilt blocks two is more based on star motif uh, geometric shapes. So let me show you a couple more things. So this is called the blocks one. I know that they're hard to see, but they come in eight by eight or nine and a half by 11 and a half. And they are put together with joining strips, which is fully documented in the pattern as well. The other thing that uh, this is a place where I first started making these uh, quilted tote bags. And basically it's an eight inch by eight inch block. I show you how to, you stitch out however many uh, you want, but you'd have four in the front, four in the back. And then you take the different blocks, the eight inch block and cut in half for the handles. I give you total instructions of how to create the beautiful tote bag from the quilt, quilted blocks. Then we don't stop there because Anna never sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> You, if you have the larger hoop, nine and a half by 11, that supports a nine and a half by 11 and a half um, stitch area, you'll do two of the big ones, put them together in the center with a joining strip. You can add a little applique and you create oh, a nice. cute little placemat. Very easy to do. And I, I'm one of those people that I want it to look pretty on the back as it does on the front. So you see how I have applique fabric on there? So before I did that final satin stitch on the on the bunny, but I went ahead and finished the little detail of the face and everything. I then went back up, went to the tack down stitch, put fabric on the back of this, trip, tacked it down, trim it, and then I changed the bobbin thread to match my top thread, and it's pretty both sides. Because wow. Anna needs to have it, Anna has to have it being pretty on both sides. <laughs> That's just how I roll, is <laughs> all I can tell you. Then here's a beautiful Christmas placemat with just beautiful, cute fa fabric and gold thread to quilt it. Very nice. So the beauty about the quilted blocks, one, and then you're going to talk about two, is that can be the base behind any applique that you do. Exactly, exactly. And so it, as I was mentioning is that if you were doing the owls and you only had an eight-inch wide hoop, you could do four of the eight-by-eight quilted blocks, put them together, and that becomes your backing fabric, and then your owl, owl goes on top of that. So I have yes. instructions about all that. And then, um, like I said, quilted blocks two has got more of that star motif on it. Quilted blocks one is more traditional blocks. And I just want to show you the baby blanket. And these are eight by eight, and they take about 10 minutes to stitch out, and then you put them together with joining strips. But look how beautiful this baby blanket looks. Oh, wow. Look at the details to that stitching. Yep. Very nice. I mean, very beautiful quilting. You can't, you know, it's not edge to edge. It's just an individual block. But I just wanted to show how that looked. So I was really, really well, it, thrilled with that. It's very stitch intensive where you get to the depth of the batting. So it's absolutely gorgeous all by itself. Yeah. And I, and I do use a Floriani embroidery batting because it gives a, a good finish and it has a stabilizer in it. Our next design is Anna's Fancy Fans. And how this design turned out, it became about is I live in the Dallas area and the Dallas Quilt Guild said, hey, we want to do a raffle quilt that we can stitch out in the hoop. Would you design us a fan block? So I did. And I'm going to show you this up front here. Maybe I'll do this one. Uh, Anna's Fancy Fans, and what I did for them 
and I created a block, an eight inch block that had what I call pointy, pointy tips and that are split. So I can't give it kind uh -huh. of a 3D look. And so they went ahead and raffled it for their quilt show and everything. And I said, hmm, now how would I take that and make it a pattern? So then I decided, well, well let me go ahead and make, first of all, this book got both the six inch and eight inch version of, of the fans. There are four different fan types, the split, let me go with this. The split with points, the regular with points, the curved or the kind of a cutoff there and then curved. So there's four different oh, nice. uh, four different fans and two different sizes. And then I thought, well, I need to make one that shows the, the smaller size. So here's the this way. There you go. Oh wow, look at that. So this is using the six inch block. And then my one perfect. of the <laughs> you, can put it up, I, you can put it up in your room and have it be your color chart for matching it, fabric. It, Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. And I just love doing things with the color wheel. But the other thing that I was trying to do with this is here's the color wheel with the white background. Here's it with the gray. And then here's it with the black. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I kind of gave, you know, each area um, kind of, okay, what will it look like? And what are the colors? So exactly. That's what I had in mind. This one particular, this one and the one hanging are, are long arm quilted. And um, I said, well, let me see what I can do about adding some quilting. So the, not only does it have the large quilt behind me and the smaller wall hanging, but it's got mug rugs. Oh. I used to know how to do this. <laughs> there we are, this way. The camera is backwards to my my brain, so it has to take a while. <laughs> but you can see how different mug rugs, and the mm -hmm. there is quilting along the top, which I created, and uh, trapunto stitching in the in the applique of the um, blades. The blades are actually pieced, so this is my first experiment with piecing in the hoop. So it, their their blades are fully pieced, and then they're finished with a satin stitch and a uh, on top and bottom. So I thought that was pretty cool. Then of course I had to say, well, what would it look like to have a placemat? So I did that. And then the alternate block is just that same quilting motif repeated. There we can see it a little bit better there. Very nice, yeah. And then, because I don't ever stop, <laughs> I wanted to see what it would look like as a table runner. Oh, look at that table runner. So it's all the same block. And it's put together with joining strips, and it's a cute little mm -hmm. table runner. So Very those nice. are the, that's Anastasi fans, and it's just like everything else, has got a lot of variety to it. Well, we did a quick switch again, and this is all about Santa. It is a design by Darcy Ashton, and she, I think, a book that came out within the last three or four years. And again, here's the design with a little thumb drive and the uh, charm with it. It does require, if you, it has different um, sizes. So if you have a large hoop, like a six, uh, six, 10 and 5 eighths by 16, you can do it in a single hooping. If you have an 8 by 12 or 9 and a half by 14, you'll be doing multiple hoopings. But you already feel comfortable with that. You know my crosshairs line up really well, and it's good to go for you on that. I wanted to point out a couple of things on this one. There are, and ask me how I know, there are a hundred flying geese on that border. And <laughs> I did it the <laughs> and I did it the old fashioned way, where you know you cut and measure and do it on the sewing machine. Mm -hmm. And after I did that hundred, I said, hmm, I think I'm gonna digitize these. So they're digitized. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Very they're very precise and very clear. And then you have this one that goes in the center in the corner. So then um, I wanted to make sure that, you know, uh, Darcy and I were talking and she says, well, make a quilt because she had a sample in her book about you better be good. So we took this design of the oh, Santa wow. yeah. and made you better be good, which is also included in the pattern. Isn't that cute? 
And again, I started off making those half square triangles all by myself with a sewing machine. Did you know that there's direct, those triangles are directional? So after I made them, half of them didn't work because I didn't have them in the right direction. <laughs> so guess what I did? I yep, made them. I digitized those little puppies too. So yeah, it's like th this one really um, came about really nice with learning. Yeah, it, it, you're never too old to learn from your mistakes. Yay! <laughs> yeah. And then I thought I saw. Um, if some about four or five years ago, I was playing with, or have had somebody ask me to play with heat transfer vinyl. Look oh, how he looks! Wow, isn't that pretty? Yeah, that's so, really neat. Now the kids would had love to, that. Absolutely. Exactly. So then, and last but not least, um, I had borrowed a stash uh, of skin color fabric from my friend, and I stuck with the same color. On the faces there but i had to try one little sample with a variety of different uh fabrics for the face color. for the skin so, tone yeah yeah oh, that looks wonderful so, too yeah so i just so wanted options. to share that there, there's, there's nine so many different options. santas yeah there are nine different santas and they can all be done either an eight inch wide hoop or nine and a half inch wide hoop that'll be multiple hooping and then if you have that larger hoop uh 10 and 5 eighths by 16 it's a single hooping so yeah uh, they're a lot of fun with that okay so now we're going to move on move on to the next design which is anna's dutch garden and guess what when it has anna in front of it that means anna designed it yay <laughs> yeah so this is my design anna's dutch garden and it's Anna's Dutch Garden because you may not know this, but I was born in Holland and my parents brought us over. I was four years old and we became American citizens about four, about five or six years later. And but I still have, you know, all my uh, relatives in Holland. So I had to do some and tulips have always been something that I just love. So I made Anna's Dutch Garden. And being an overachiever, I make lots of different walks so that you can put them together in any way you want. So this first one is what I call on point. Oh, so pretty. And it's got filler blocks and the same uh, design throughout. I'm going to bring it a little closer. I don't know if you can see, but the each of the flowers have got Accents of gold thread on there to accent it out. Oops. And there's some curly cues just to make it look pretty and interesting. So oh, yeah. there's there's one block and two blocks. And the, these designs can be done on six inch and eight inch. I did the same thing. I took that same flower and I grouped them in a different position. And then you can see this particular design has got corner blocks and border blocks. So there's a bunch of different options on here. And these are the full flowers. The reason I mention that is when I show you the next sample. This is the bud oh, wow. version of the wall hanging. So right. now you have something that um, can go you know, on, looks a totally different just doing the buds. And again, it's got corners and borders and the centerpieces that are buds rather than full flowers. Then somebody mentioned, well, those are really pretty and they're nice and pastel and we love the colors, but what would it look like on black? This is a Ooh. table runner. Look how beautiful oh, that looks. That's so pretty. And yeah. all these things that I'm showing you, there's instructions to do that in the pattern. That almost throws back to, you know, Spanish tiles again. It's just gorgeous. Thank you. And my quilter did, did a metallic thread. So there's the gold thread that's in the quilting. So, yeah. And then, of course, you got to have a table or a placemat to go with the table runner. So you have all kinds of instructions on that. All righty. So now... We're going to go to Art Deco Fan. I started off with, okay, this is another one of mine. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and here, here is a design, and there's several different pieces that are coming with this. So 
keep it, keep it uh, tuned. The first thing that I did about this is turn, put that right <laughs> side, turn it right side up. Okay, so this is more of a traditional softer palette of fabric. But what I love about this design, it is one color thread. So I'm going to bring it a little closer. Each fan has a series of different blending of fabrics, but they're all pulled together with one color thread as a finish stitch. So you, you don't have to change your thread color anymore on this design. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it comes both in 6-inch and 8-inch. Then my sister says, well, Anna, all your designs that you've done so far are um, don't have any quilting in them. When are you going to add quilting? Well, a lot of the designs, I work with different hand applique artists, and they're already going out to the edge of the hoop because I want to stay true to their original size as much as I can. So I thought, well, I'm creating this Art Deco fan. I could probably figure out how to put some quilting in it. And I just took the basic design from my quote, my uh, digitizing software. And if you can see, I think it looks good. Oh, wow. Here. I just did a cross hatching around the fans. And then I created corner blocks and triangles to just do the fillers in there. So I thought, that, well, that's pretty simple. And I used my um, journey strip technique to put them together. And that was an eight inch. And then here's a six inch, which kind of shows you wow. um, two colors, three colors, four colors, and five colors. So it shows you a different range. And here it looks like stained glass because I use black, right? Correct. So there's yes. so many options. So then <laughs> I also thought, well, let me go ahead and do placemats. Look at this beautiful placemat. Oh, wow. Yeah. Totally different. I love that yours are reversible. Yes. Oh, it has to look pretty on the back, too. Yes. <laughs> and in this case, I'm using a decorative stitch to secure the joining strip rather than doing stitch in the ditch. Then here's the blue one. This is always my favorite. Blue is my mm -hmm. favorite color. Now look how pretty it looks on the back. And then I have this one. The red, yes. And this one. Oh, I then, like that. And it's just so different, you know. Again, mm -hmm. your whatever color, whatever year the month of the year it is. So then I got invited probably five years ago to do a class at a, a shop for to teach people how to do applique in the hoop. And I thought, well, Anna's fancy fans or uh, our deco fan would be perfect, and I'll create a mug rug pattern. So I used the six inch version and I taught them how to create mug rugs. So ah. all these beautiful little mug rugs. So now that's part of the pattern. Well, if you're going to do a six inch mug rug, you got to have an eight inch one as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then the of the other placemats that I showed you were different colors, but this is a one color design. So this is one color where I started out the pattern to be two, three, four, or five different fabrics. Mm -hmm. This now has one color fabric. So it has just, you don't have to change uh, or trim anything but one color. And that's the same with the mug rugs, just all one color fabric. You can make it really fancy and have a lot of movement in there, or you can have it really just straightforward and plain, but they're all beautiful and finished nicely. Then last but not least on this design, I had to create a tote bag because you know, I showed you earlier today that I love to create tote bags with an eight inch by eight inch quilted block. So here's a tote bag. Here's one side of it. Oh, wow, Anna. And then you can see oh, the, really the fans are pointed to the center. And here's the other side of it. <laughs> in reverse in reverse and now the fans are in the corner coming out yeah. so it's just so interesting what you can do with these designs and did I mention I never stop <laughs> <laughs> so I just really enjoy that when I do my own designs it's like I just sometimes go overboard but I really love how that works and I love the fact that it's one color thread yeah that makes it easy and a faster stitch out Absolutely. It's like a cathedral okay. window behind you. 
absolutely. And, and that, again, is one of my own designs. So I've always loved Frank Lloyd Wright. I was going to be an architect at one point in my earlier years, but I moved away from it. But I love his the artwork. And I actually did create hand, uh, hand stained glass where I had the, the, everything to do that with. However, this design, which is stained glass and a stained glass, it's got three different panels that I'm going to show you here in a minute, and it has much more. So let me show you what they have. So the three different panels will fit an eight inch wide hoop and or um, nine and a half. I'm going to show you the three. Got it. Okay. okay. <laughs> these are the three panels. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Very I took nice. these, these three panels and pulled different blocks from each one to create this wall hanging. So you can do something as simple as a easy panel, or you can do just keep adding however you want to. And that's what I did there. The, and I you'll love notice, the ombre, the ombre-ness yeah, of that yeah. quilt where it's light to dark. And I did that deliberately. I just wanted to show that light to dark. Thank you for pointing that out. The other thing I wanted to mention is I, I use this iridescent mesh the, I put white fabric down first and I put this on top and based it down because I love that sparkly look. You see how oh, it sparkles? Yeah. We yeah, have to have sparkles. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that not only likes things on the back to look pretty, but I want the, uh, on the front look is nice. Now this one, I didn't put that sparkly on there, but this is the larger panel size. Oh, so pretty. And again, it's amazing how it can change looks and feels when you have different colors. Then, okay, and it doesn't stop. So then I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to make a little zipper bag? And I designed the little quilting. It's fully lined. And you do the first part, and then you do another hooping for the second part and put them together, and you have a zipper bag. But it's not just that design. It's this one. And this one, look how different they look. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. How many yeah. more can you do? And then uh, I thought, well, you know, that cute little zipper bag, but if you put little tabs on them, it can be over the shoulder bag. Yeah. So you have all options like that. Then doesn't stop there. I went ahead and created mug rugs, four different mug rugs. And that cute, very cool, upside, yeah, upside down. So they're included that, and also included in there, which I don't have out, is a table runner and a placemat, and it's got unique quilting for the size as well. And last but not least, to show you on the stained glass, and this is something that anybody can do at any time. I was actually invited to the Brother uh, Convention back in 2018. <laughs> And I brought this along, and before, you know, when I brought it, it was just the white fabric. And I had everybody oh, wow. sign it when I taught the different classes to the different owners of the Brother Machine. So Very can you nice. see how you could you could do this yeah. for a, a you know, baby shower, a birthday, anniversary, anything. So it's just a nice little momentum of, of that time. So I thought that well, was I a love, lot of fun. I love that if you're going to make a mug rug for someone... These would be more of a masculine look than most mug rugs that you see out there. Um, exactly. Something that your husband or your son wouldn't mind putting, you know, out. They're not going to necessarily want something very feminine and flowery. So I love them. Yeah. And yeah, and you can customize them to anything you want and make whatever colors that you want. So I, I had a lot of fun with that. We're going to start with the second to the last design. Yay. And it's called All Around the Block. And the reason it's called all around the block is because you're going to start in the center and go around. But let me give you some history behind it. I was moving in 2020 to a new location. And um, I, my friend Donna was helping me, and she's part of the quilt guild. She always keeps me in line. She says, and she, and she does a lot of things for the Dallas quilt, uh, quilt guild and everything. And she says, Anna, have you ever thought about piecing in the hoop and using the fun and done technique. And I said, well, I'm not sure I'm aware of what that is. And she says, well, let me explain it to you. And she's explaining while we're 
packing and moving and things. And I said, so, and what I heard was piecing in the hoop, quilting it, and then finishing it with a fun and done technique. So I did some research. I created some, I created four blocks. So I, my initial sample was this, and there's four different blocks in there. And basically around the block means you start in the center with that center block, and then you do the triangles and the next round and the next round, and then you do the quilting. So I showed her this, I sent her pictures. Says, Anna, that's really pretty. However, I know your color, your favorite color is blue, but why don't you try something different? And I said, well, what do you mean? She says, make a scrappy. And it's very hard for me to make scrap because I <laughs> like, like things to be or, you know, orderly and planned and everything. I said, okay. So this is the same design, same blocks in the same positions, but each fabric is a different color. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then look how pretty the quilting is on the back. The back is. Yes, very nice. Because Anna likes it pretty on the back to the front. So then my friend Donna made some samples and I made some samples. She made this cute little sample. Oh, using yeah. it, using different, uh, just two different colors. I thought, well, I wonder what that fun and done would look like if the backing fabric was um, a different print. So a fun and done from what I learned is that you, your backing fabric becomes your sashing and your binding. So I use this as the backing fabric and look how it looks with it. Oh, yeah. Gives you a whole different Definitely look. a different feel, yeah. And then my friend Donna, that talked me into doing this, <laughs> but I love it. Uh, she says, well, you know, if you make, the here she did kind of an eye spy in the center. And then if you make the backing fabric different colors, you can see how the sashing and the mm -hmm. binding comes to completely different. And then, of course, I had, you know, this comes in two different sizes, six inch and eight inch. So here's a cute, or if the hoop size would be that, but here's a cute little mug rug. Of mm -hmm. course, if you have a mug rug, you have to have a placemat. Of course. <laughs> and then this is one that she made for, from an I spy perspective. And again, she, oh, wow. she did a different color, but look at in each little center square. Isn't that cute? Oh yeah. So there, this has got a lot of versatility. People just love it. And then last but not least, I made this baby blanket out of the four blocks. That is just so striking. Very pretty and vibrant. So, thank you. So it's just a fun little design. Um, I'm not going to, yeah. And, but just to remember that the your backing fabric becomes your sashing and your binding. Alrighty. Last but not least, and my most new, the most recent design is Mod Moves. And as you can tell behind me, Mod definitely moves because there's all kinds of color and movement <laughs> in the sample. That happens to be the 10 inch block. It also is available on the same design for an eight inch wide block. So one of the things I wanted to show was when I started doing this, I wanted to see, well, what would it look different if it had the uh, same blocks but different color combinations? So here it is in oh, black. Oh, wow. Yeah. And there it is in white. And they're the exact same blocks but just in a different it, – either it has a back or black or white. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I always go with the black because I think it makes it pop more. So that was my direction on that. And then – of course, I always have to do a tote bag. So again, I use those eight-inch blocks and made a tote bag, put them together, joining strips, and use one of the blocks to make the handles and just cut them in half. And I've got instructions for that as well. And then, of course, we have to do the placemat. Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. And it's got, it's not, it doesn't have binding. It has, I think, a facing finish is what they call it. So you're going to stitch in the back, you're gonna like envelope it, but there's the uh, backing is definitely um, where you're gonna finish your, your design. There's not gonna be any binding on there. And then to match that placemat is um, a table runner. It's gonna be a wonderful table runners, yeah. Yeah. 
So we're not going to do that one. Now, last but not least, to show you on this one is just like we did the colorful range on the 8 inch or 10 inch block, we did the 8 inch block. Yeah. Oh, See, my goodness. Here. What a different look. Yeah. yeah. A little bit smaller. Yeah, totally different look. So what I love about this is twofold. One is you have totally different look depending on the fabric you select, but also you can rotate each block in four different directions and get a total different movement of the design. Yeah, your pattern. Your pattern will yeah. completely change. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So it, the, the key thing is once you figure out one that you like is to make sure you have a way to identify it so you don't put it in the wrong place or the wrong direction. <laughs> Yep. And I do, I don't provide some hints of how I did that. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's mod moves. And that is, I actually got third place in the Dallas quilt show with it last year in 2023. So yay. Well, very good. Congratulations, by the way. Thank well, and you. I love all of your designs and all the quilts that you have to offer. There's so much detail, so much effort went into um, not having a one trick pony. There's so many things you can do with just that one little pattern, you know, placemats, mug rugs, a quilt, you know, you have really thought of everything, Anna. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I try to, <laughs> and I always take suggestions. So yay for that. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you once again. It's been so um, invigorating watching all the quilts and everything that you have to offer again. And thank you for joining us for our April So Fun Club. Absolutely. And I'll look forward to seeing everything in April then. Thank you. Okay. You take care, Anna, and we will be in touch. All righty. Bye-bye. So for my show and tell for this month, I have brought in my half crazy quilt. And this was one of my COVID quilts. Um, it had been a pattern that I had for a while and I knew that it had a lot of work to it. So when COVID hit, it was the perfect time to make this wonderful quilt and I absolutely love it. So this is made by um, one sister and it is a funky sampler quilt. Um, I made it in 2019. And um, once again, it's called Half Crazy. Um, it has rough edge elements to it so it's applique but it also has traditional piecing so there's a little bit of everything in this quilt um, and I absolutely love the funkiness to it so let me get out of the way so you can see it in all of its glory on the bottom it's got a wheelbarrow with flowers and you know it's just got a fun feel and vibe to it and one of my favorite things is up in the corner the sun the sun has so much detail it to it with all of those rays. So, I can't wait to see what you are going to share for this month for our show and tell. And don't forget, moors-sew.com for any and all of your sewing needs. I wanna thank you for joining us for this month's Sew Fun Club. Keep in mind, next month we'll have another fabulous vendor that we will be able to share and talk to. And until then, happy stitching, everyone. Bye-bye.